Hey everyone. If you could pick any way to geek out on a weekend, what better way to do that than with a star party and some role-playing games? So I'm at a star party this weekend, and with me I've got a couple of imaging rigs that I'm going to use to try to capture a number of role-playing game inspired nebulas. I'm going to try for the Cosmic Bat, the Flying Dragon, the Skull Nebula, Thor's Helmet, and the Cave Nebula. Now, I don't think I'm going to get through all of these, but if I can get through two or three, I'll be extremely happy. So join me tonight for some astrophotography fun. Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. Now, I've learned the hard way that you can ruin an astrophotography adventure if you forget one key piece of equipment. In order to avoid that, I have taken to doing a complete equipment check and live test to make sure that I will be packing everything I need, and equally important, that everything works. I'm already taking a risk by changing my configuration to include a small USB-powered travel router which I'm going to be using to network the mini PC, which controls my 6-inch telescope, and the laptop that controls my 300mm travel rig, so that they can both be controlled by a third laptop. People often post questions about the best way to protect their gear while traveling, where to buy padded travel bags, what kind of hard case is best, and so forth. While I'm not putting down specialized equipment carrying cases, and I certainly would not turn them down if they showed up at my doorstep, I see that many of them are very expensive. For packing my gear for a road trip, I'm perfectly fine with using padded plastic bins. For example, here I'm using a pool noodle and some thick blankets to create a formed cradle to hold my OTA and all of its attachments and I'm wrapping additional lenses and bubble wrap to fit into the same bin. Can I just say that I'm very impressed by anyone who shows up to a star party in a sedan. In fact, hats off to the guy from Quebec who set up down the hill from me with three telescopes, including a 12-inch daub. Packing up that car took real skill. The star party my son and I are at this weekend is called Starfest. It is Canada's largest annual amateur astronomy conference and star party, attracting hundreds of astronomy enthusiasts from Ontario, neighboring provinces, and the U.S. since 1982. Located under Bortle Three Skies and featuring guest speakers, vendors, swap tables, workshops, and kids' activities, it has been ranked among the top star parties in North America by Sky and Telescope magazine. There are two main fields used by Starfest at River Place Park Campground. The field closest to the washroom facilities, conference building, and main event tent has power drops available for purchase in order to power your equipment only. The further field has traditionally been off-grid, requiring you to bring your own power source. Between both fields, Starfest has been able to accommodate upwards of 600 people. Moving from my backyard in Milton to Starfest is like upgrading my telescope by a factor of two or three. I'll be able to image without filters and make out much more detail, including faint dust nebulae, which would be washed out by the glow of the city sky. The star party officially starts on Thursday. However, many people come up for the entire week. By the time we came up on Wednesday night, space in the field, which usually has power outlets, was already very limited. Luckily, organizers had extended one power run to the outer field. We'll come back to that later. We were able to find a great spot along the access road facing south, but with unobstructed views in all directions. 
the ground sloped away from the spot, guaranteeing that even if someone were to set up in front of us, they would be lower down and not in our field of view. This spot was just within reach of the new 100-foot power cable I had picked up for the trip, with only one additional extension cord needed. The skies were overcast on Wednesday, so we spent the evening walking around, having dinner, chilling in the trailer, and calling it an early night. We woke up Thursday to a great big blue sky and a clear forecast, so we got to setting up the telescopes. The equipment we brought with us includes my main imaging rig, which is a Celestron Nexstar 6SE on a wedge, definitely not conventional for imaging. It is guided by a Svibani SV106 50mm guide scope and an SV905C planetary guide camera, controlled by a Windows Mini PC. It uses a one-shot color ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro camera and has a filter tray attached to the imaging train. This weekend, I plan to use a UV IR cut filter only. For brevity, I have taken to calling this setup Nomad. I also have my more portable grab-and-go rig. It's a Frankensteinian setup built around the Celestron Nexstar SLT mount running in EQ mode on a wedge. It is guided by a small SV165 40mm guide scope and SV305 camera combo, and images with a ZWO ASI 294MC Pro camera. This setup uses interchangeable Nikon-compatible DSLR lenses, including a 14mm f2.8 Rokinon, a 135mm f2 Rokinon, and a vintage Nikkor 300 FED f4.5 lens. These lenses connect through a ZWO camera adapter with a built-in filter tray. I used to refer to this as my Frankenstein rig, but I'm officially naming it V'ger. For this star party, I'm going to be using the 300mm Nikkor lens and a UV IR cut filter, same as with Nomad. In addition to imaging, we have a second Celestron Nexstar 6SE for visual observation, which my son will be running. Bortle 3 skies should offer some amazing views of deep sky objects we wouldn't be able to see closer to home. Thursday night started off well enough. I was imaging the Flying Dragon Nebula, which is Sharpless 2 114 with V'ger, and pointing Nomad at NGC 246. NGC 246 is a planetary nebula, a remnant of a dying star in the constellation Cetus, while the Flying Dragon is a faint emission nebula in Cygnus. Its filamentary structure likely stems from remnants of stellar winds or magnetically shaped shock fronts and resembles the shape of a flying dragon with outstretched wings. With very low surface brightness, this is a challenging target which would be very hard to image from home. There were no equipment issues and polar alignment was quick and painless using red dot finders to rough align the wedges and drift alignment to fine tune the orientation of both mounts. Everything was going smoothly and then without warning, the power went out. Unfortunately, electricity in the portion of the field where I am at went out three times, and the last time it stayed out for the rest of the night. Now, I brought batteries with me, but I did not have them connected in advance, and I did put them on after 3 a.m., which left me with a little bit of time to do some imaging. However, others around me weren't so lucky. One poor guy had gone to sleep and not realized there was another power outage until morning. He ended up losing most of the night of imaging. We spent the morning on Friday sleeping in, grabbing food, doing a bit of reading, and walking around admiring other people's setups. The important message that my son took away from this to my wife is that my imaging setup was the least expensive of all of the ones we saw, not including the small smart telescopes. True to the theme of the trip, 
we ran a pretty cool little adventure I had come up with over the week before. And then we got ready for another evening of astronomy. I got a tip from a friend from my astronomy club, thanks Dan, to run my equipment from the batteries while charging the batteries from AC. This would work better with lithium ion batteries which are often rated as uninterruptible power supplies or UPSs. But my lead acid battery power banks charge too slowly to keep up with the power drain from my equipment. Still, this could stretch out how long the batteries would last to cover the entire evening if the power dropped again. Incidentally, we learned that the power was dropping out because it got cold at night, and some people were running space heaters in their tents, which is an incredibly silly thing to do, and caused a lot of grief for many people, including my friend from Quebec who drove 10 hours to be there and lost the one night of good imaging as a result. Unfortunately, we weren't going to be as lucky with the weather on Friday night. Although we were able to view a few targets with the visual scope, there wasn't enough time during the breaks in the clouds to image any new targets with Nomad, which would require more integration time at 1000 millimeters. So I used that time there to gather more light on the Skull Nebula. I did try to image the Cave Nebula in wider field with V'ger, but there just wasn't enough time and what I got did not turn out very well. On Saturday, we visited the swap tables and left the star party shortly after noon to attend my niece's wedding reception. So congratulations to her and all the happiness in the world to her and her husband. We had an awesome time at the reception and wouldn't have missed it for the world. My son had to go home with my wife and daughter for another obligation, so I headed back to the star party on my own. And on the way, I got caught in a tremendous downpour, which washed out the rest of Saturday night, giving me an opportunity to finish reading Silo, the first book of the Silo trilogy. Very entertaining read if you're looking for post-apocalyptic sci-fi. And that was it for Starfest 2025. I was a little disappointed with only being able to image two targets. And so, when I got home, I spent the next few weeks trying to get some additional data. I imaged the Cave Nebula using V'ger, and I added some narrowband data to the Skull Nebula using Nomad. I also imaged the Wizard Nebula and the Ghost of Cassiopeia, both with Nomad, at 1000 millimeters. The cosmic bat, however, continues to be elusive. It's the one that got away. It was just too low on the horizon, and I had too little time with the power outages to be able to image it at Starfest. And it's too dim of a target to be able to image from my backyard. So it's going to have to wait. So here are some fantasy-themed deep sky targets captured from Bortle 3 Starfest and from my Bortle 8 backyard. If you can think of a few more, let me know in the comments. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and clear skies.